So can you become a mega star without a label? Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stein and today I want to talk about mega stardom without a label. And this kind of discussion has been motivated with some of the interactions that I've had on Instagram. And I believe it was a video of Kanye West talking about how uh, recording artists need to be CEOs and uh, have the mindset of a business. And uh, I was looking through the comments and I, I just kind of started interacting with someone. It was, you know, it was very uh, cordial, but they said they, they were talking about this, this kind of often, uh, at least recently often repeated line that, you know, independent artists can do such and such and such nowadays because there's, there's platforms for independent distribution and there's uh, ways to, you know, retain your, your royalties and your earnings directly instead of having to go through a label. And I just put out the idea that you can't be a megastar without a record label. And this kind of set off a, a kind of a, a big reaction of people who were kind of upset by the fact that I said that. And, and these aren't people that necessarily follow me or know my content and know that I've put out a lot of content about how to navigate the music industry as an independent artist, right? That's kind of basically my platform is that's what I'm doing and trying to do. And that's what I'm trying to share with you all. But I put out that you can't be a megastar. You can't be a top tier uh, artist, not in terms of talent. We're not talking about talent. We're talking about acclaim. We're talking about uh, the greatest and highest level of reach and uh, I guess you could say uh, penetration into the wider uh, culture of entertainment. This particular person said uh, they were talking about Travis Scott and, and whatnot. And I said, you can't, you can't be a Travis Scott without a record label. And they said, oh, yes, you can. And I said, give me an example of someone in the history of the music industry up until today that has been an independent artist that has been, has become or is a megastar. And they gave me the example of Chance the Rapper, Freddie Gibbs, and Tech 9 And I kind of want to just walk through the response that I gave to them regarding these three. And, and I, I'm, I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They may not have done like a bunch of research before they said these three names, and they may not have thought through it, you know, in, at any length of time. So I'm not going to like consider this the best three answers. But before I start, I want to talk about what I'm defining as a megastar. And first, I'll give you some examples. Drake is one. Kanye West is one. Jay-Z, Adele, Ariana Grande, Ed Sheeran. Anybody that, Nicki Minaj, anybody with a massive fan base. Now, that's, it's not just limited to fan base because there's plenty of people with big fan bases that aren't megastars. And one of them is the example that this guy gave, and that's Tech 9 Now, when I say megastar, I'm not talking about whether they're a good musician. I'm not talking about what you or I think about their music. I'm talking about the, the reach and the influence of their platform. So we're talking about people with at least 10 million followers on Instagram. We're talking about people that have appeared in a movie or let's say a documentary on Netflix. Someone who is in other people's content such as a music video or someone else's TV show like Ellen or Saturday Night Live, a, a broad market uh, that reaches a wide group of people. Uh, let's say, let's throw in, has been on a cover of a magazine. 
has had a sit down or interview with a another person outside of their musical genre or outside of the music industry entirely. Um, so these are just a few examples of, of ways that you can tell someone has permeated the broader, not just music, not just their genre, not just entertainment, but the entire culture of a particular country, let's say the United States. So, first of all, <clears throat> as successful and monetarily ex successful, someone like Chance the Rapper or Tech Nine are. Te Tech Nine is probably the most commercially successful independent rap artist in the history of music. He is consistently in the top numbers of earnings for hip hop artists, and he's independent. He owns his own label, Strange Music. And so um, he qualifies for, you know, he has a massive fan base in the Midwest. And But the truth is, he does not have megastar status. People outside of the hip hop community probably don't know who Tech Nine is. If Tech Tech Nine would never be a guest on Saturday Night Live, Tech Nine is probably never going to be on the cover of a magazine that isn't related to some subgenre of hip hop or in his local region, which I think is Kansas City. So, in terms of being independent and making it to this level. Even though Tech 9 is, is extremely successful, he is not a megastar. Most people don't know who Tech 9 is. If you go down the street and you ask 100 people who Tech 9 is, you might get a few people, is my guess. If you walk down the street and say, have you ever heard of Ariana Grande or Drake or Ed Sheeran? Chances are someone from the ages of six years old to 70 years old is probably going to say yes. As far as Freddie Gibbs is concerned, he has a success. He's had a successful independent artist, uh, artist, uh, I'm sorry, independent career. He's also been signed by Interscope. Chance the Rapper has a distribu distribution deal with a record, a record label. So I get, uh, this is where I want to kind of switch gears because because now that I think it's clear what you, it's clear what I think about reaching the highest level of entertainment and music, the highest level can only be reached through a record label backing. And one of the reasons, the main reason is no one has done that before. And these three people are, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think hardly anybody, I think Freddie Gibbs is less known than than Tech 9 or Chance the Rapper easily. So he's not a good example. But I think a, a good example someone to measure this with is the most successful entertain or independent rap artist ever, and that is Tech 9. So why do I think that? Why do I think that Tech 9 is 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 not has not reached the megastar status, uh, even though he has been extremely successful commercially um, and has a huge following. Why has how has he not been able to reach megastar status despite the fact of having you know a 20 year plus career? I think it's directly related to the fact that he is not part of a major record label. And here are the reasons why. The first and primary reason is that record labels have a massive network of people. The history of these major record labels and networks, many of which are associated with bigger entertainment networks, is so vast and is so deep it's something that no individual person could ever attain on their own. Not just because it's a lot of work, but it, these relationships have existed for years and years and years, longer than any of our careers' lengths, even the longest duration of, of a career. The relationships, the relationships that, that labels have with 
TV shows with movies syncing their, their songs in commercials and movies and video games, radio, their connections to influencers at magazines like Rolling Stone or, or at big music blogs, uh, especially in the past. A lot of these people who had strong relationships with rec- record labels at these particular outlets that may or may not be as big as they used to be are now in other areas of influence that are maybe on the internet instead of just, you know, instead of on like a specific website, they're on maybe a social media platform now like Complex or Fader or something like that. So the number one reason I would say uh, you have to have a, me- a, 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 a label or labels backing to reach a megastar status is because you have to have a connection. You have to have a connection to reach all the different things that get you into these platforms and these forms of media, such as Saturday Night Live or a mag- being on the cover of a magazine or being you know, on The Ellen Show as a, as a guest or being on 60 Minutes or... Any, any of these type of uh, outlets that are to a massive uh, audience. Now, I know, obviously, there's people on the Ellen Show that have been on there that are just internet, one, one hit wonders, or someone that did something, some funny mean on the internet, and now they're on the Ellen Show. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, not the one in a million people that come on the show because of something silly or something famous that they've done. I'm talking about people who have such a an influence on culture and their fandom and the general idea or general world of entertainment that they are able to navigate and go into these various different circles and are invited to um, events and, and, and other forms of entertainment or recording that they normally would not been, have access to. That primarily is coming through the backing and the relationships of a label. So think about this. Even if you're an independent artist, and let's say let's say you have a manager, and you're big enough that you you have a big enough fan base and you've sold enough music to to be able to be a CEO like Kanye West is talking about. And now you have people that work for you. If you have people that work for you, that means that you're successful enough to pay for not only yourself, but someone else. I mean, that, at the basic definition. And what that means is, is that if you hire a manager to handle, let's say, your tour dates or your business or whatever you want them to handle in terms of you know, what you hired them for, it's their responsibility to get you on these TV shows, to get you on magazines, to get you interviews, to get you as the, as the subject of a Netflix documentary, for example. Now imagine what that one person can do if they work 40 hours a week. And maybe they're probably working more than that, especially if you're famous. Let's say they're working 50 or 60 hours a week. Imagine what that one person can do over a span of like five or six years in the prime of someone's career as opposed to a corporation or an entertainment uh, conglomerate like Warner or Sony. Some massive group that has hundreds, maybe thousands of people and the, the relationships are already in place. The relationships are already in place. And so those thousands of people that work for these companies only have to get the ball in play because it's already, it's already rolling. It's already, the, the machine is already lubricated and ready to run. All they have to do is hit start. Now, if you're coming up as an independent artist, it may take you a decade to find relationships through your one person that gets you enough influence to be on some massive scale, you know, of a Netflix movie or or an interview with, you know, Barbara Walters or or some massive outlet that is bigger than music, that is bigger than entertainment. So, as much as I advocate advocate for the independent artists 
as independent as I am, which is 100%, I don't have anybody working for me. I, I produce, record, engineer, and mix and write all my music, perform all my music. So I'm as independent as it gets. And as much as I love that, as much as I like the idea of being completely in control of my fate, the truth of the matter is, is that if I were to remain independent, it would be, it would be exponentially more difficult for me to reach a high level of success than someone who has made a career and a fortune off of being independent like Tech 9 for example. Tech 9 is never ever going to be a megastar as as successful as he is because he does not have the connections or the association a backing that has enough interest in him and enough relationships to get him into the place where he can permeate these various outlets outside of music, outside of rap. Now, I know that he is exceptionally wealthy, is, has, a, has an exceptional catalog, and is an extremely gifted musician and uh, writer and hip-hop artist. No, I'm not taking away from him or his career or his ability at all. But what I'm saying is, as successful as he is, he will still not be able to make it into that top echelon of artists. And it has nothing to do with his skill. It has nothing to do with his talent. It has to do with who he is associated with. And, and, and strange music, as successful and as, as many artists as they've signed over the years that have gone on to have other successful careers, they do not have the pull that a Warner or Sony or Geffen Records or Interscope or Island Records, any at Columbia, any of these major, any of these major groups. So that's my argument. I never ever meant to take away from independent artists in any way, shape, or form, uh, considering that I am one and I support them and I spend a lot of time you know, conversing with independent artists and trying to think through ideas that would be helpful for them. But if your goal, and you're in it for the fame and you're in it for the top tier, you're in it for the you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award and all that stuff. You're, you're in it for the, 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 the influence or the, the, the permeation of broader culture outside of your genre, outside of music, outside of entertainment. You can't do it with, without a massive, uh, a massive backing or a massive label behind you. I hope that changes. I'd love to see uh, this... Prove, I would love to see the future prove me wrong, but I'd be interested in knowing what you think about this, uh, about, about my argumentation, about what I've put forward, and um, if you think it could happen in the future, who do you think maybe uh, is the next or the first independent artist that makes it into that top tier of entertainers? Thank you again for watching. Uh, it means a lot to me. I, I really appreciate you know you, you listening to, to these thoughts, and I hope that it, it brings value to you. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.